morning everyone, this is Bremster, and if you're wondering why you're not seeing the normal screen on this video, it's because this is not a puzzle solve video. Um, in this video, I'm planning on showing you how you can enter a solution into a puzzle grid so that when you enter, when someone solves your puzzle, that it will come up with the correct message saying that they've entered the exact correct solution for your puzzle rather than just um, trying to uh, guess whether they've entered a correct any correct Sudoku solution solution into the grid. And the reason I am doing this right now is Sven Newman, who develops uh, Sudoku Pad, or also known as the CTC app, has been working on um, making improvements to the solution checker. And one of the things he's doing is making it that if there is a correct solution entered into the grid, it will come up and say that your solution is correct. Um, but if you there is no solution entered into into the grid, then it will come up and say, I think this is correct, but I'm not 100% sure because no solution has been provided. Um, and when that goes live, there might be some questions asked about how you enter a correct solution. So this video is for me to be able to show you how do you do that. Um, and actually, you do not do this in the um, Sudoku Pad app. Um, you actually um, or the way I know to do it is actually using tools with a different app, um, and that's the app that many of us use to create um, puzzles. And you do we do this in F Puzzles, which is this tool here. Um, uh, F Puzzles was created by Eric Fox a few years ago, um, and we've been using this to create puzzles for a long time. Um, but we use a lot of scripts that have been created by Ranksk, another um, uh, puzzle solver. He's got his own YouTube channel. Um, and those scripts have developed and enhanced F puzzles a lot over the last year or so, um, where it's got a lot more features than Eric put into it. Um, and they're scripts that you can load onto your computer. And in order to make this work um, fully, you actually need to do that. So below, I'm going to be providing a link um, to this page whoops, wrong one, this page, which is where you can get the details of how to load the FPuzzles integration details of Rank's scripts um, onto your computer, um, particularly these ones down here, but you should read through the whole thing. Um, and the one that we're going to care about the most is this solution um, code script, but there'll be more to put into it than that. Um, so what I'm going to be focusing on is these and which ones you need. So on my computer, the ones that I'm running um, for this video, though I normally run all of them, are uh, these scripts here. Now, Taper Monkey is something you may not have seen before. Um, the details to install it are on the page that it was listed well, um, just before. And what you will need to do is run probably most of these that I've got um, turned on here. The Sudoku Solver um, is just the master script that runs a whole bunch of tools that allows it to interpret Sudoku um, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and it gives us some of the export tools and everything. The solution is the one that allows us to store the solution. So that's the purpose of this video. Uh, multicolor, I possibly could have turned off. That's just highlighting multicolor. JSON editor, I probably could have turned off. I just keep it turned on for everything. CPU just reduces the CPU usage. Blue values I find very important because it means when you enter solution uh, digits in solution mode in F puzzles, they come up as blue rather than gray, and you can actually see them clearer. Um, but the two that are most important are these two here, the Sudoku solver and the solution mode um, tools. Now, and the whole point of that is I'm going to show you now what happens. This is an old puzzle of mine. It was one of the first ones I set. Um, as I said, I'm not going to show you how to solve this puzzle, but I'm now going to enter, and I'll speed this up, but I'm going to enter the solution into this grid and you will see what happens um, when you do not enter a solution into the grid first. Now I'm actually gonna put this into the test um, version of the Sudoku Pad app, because as I said, the, as of me recording this, this um, all of the stuff I'm talking about hasn't fully gone live yet. The solution checker is live and that is absolutely in there, but all of the alerts and everything he's talking about are still, I think they're going live in a few days. So um, I'm just gonna quickly change to the test version and then I'm gonna enter the code and you'll see what I'm talking about.
So, as you can see, I've now completed the puzzle um, and I've entered it into the grid and what I've got is a message saying, yay, congrats, but it looks as good as far as I can tell. The puzzle doesn't include a solution and that's because the app is not 100% sure whether what I've entered is just a valid Sudoku or the specific valid Sudoku for this puzzle. Now, it is the correct valid Sudoku for this puzzle, but it doesn't know that. Um, and if I'd entered a different valid Sudoku grid, which did not completely match the um, the rules of the thermos and the even digits, it would have given exactly the same message because it couldn't tell. And there's no way that Sven could actually code for every rule set that people come up with. People are coming up with new rule sets every day and he can't keep up with that. So the easiest way for people to actually, for Sven, um, people to be able to be sure that the app knows the correct solution is to enter the exact correct solution into the grid because they're always coming up with new things. Now he is trying to put some of the standard constraints in, but it's still very, very hard for him to keep up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back, I'm going to close this window, I'm going to go back to FPuzzles and I'm going to show you how to enter the exact correct solution into FPuzzles so that when you complete a puzzle in um, Sudoku Pad, it will only show the message based on having entered the exact correct solution. So what you want to do is you want to go to FPuzzles, and this is the mode that FPuzzles is in. Um, when you first go into FPuzzles, or if you've just created a puzzle in FPuzzles, you're probably in setting mode. You, you need to hit this button to change it to solving mode. And now what you want to do is you want to enter the correct solution, um, however you've got the correct solution or you get into it there in any way, but you want to enter the correct solution into F puzzles. And again, I'll speed this up because me entering digits left to right, not very interesting. So now I've entered the correct digits into the grid and they could have been any digits in any placement. If I'm entering a non-standard Sudoku grid where I'm not following the normal rules, I may have had to go on into the settings and turned off highlight conflicts. So for example, if I was using um, repeated digits or any of that sort of stuff, I may have had to have done that. Um, now, once I've entered the correct solution, I take it back to setting mode and this is where I hit the export button and I copy compressed link. Please ignore the fact that I've got both menus here, the original and the new menu here. That's just a bug I've got with the current version of the um, Sudoku Solver um, script on my computer. They all the, the menu is working correctly. You may or may not see this. Don't worry about it. But I copy the compressed link and this will give me a short link to the puzzle with the solution saved in it. Um, I then stick that into a spreadsheet. I've got a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of different links and this will be a version of this puzzle with the solution saved in FPuzzles. Um, and the reason I do that is quite often FPuzzles does not store the solution when you export it. So I want, um, if I use the solution tools option, it doesn't understand that metadata fully. So what I want to come back, I want to have all of these blue digits saved in my grid so that um, if I want to then make a change to the puzzle, I still don't have to rediscover my solution again. I've got a copy of the puzzle with my solution in it. Um, then what you want to do is you want to go to solution tools and you want to hit save solution. And anytime you export it to Sudoku Pad or the CTC app, you want to hit save solution just to make sure that you have definitely locked that solution into the metadata for the puzzle. Once you've done that, you can go export and you open it in CTC. This will send it through to Sudoku Pad and you, I see exactly the same grid. The difference is in this grid, I have the solution stored in the code of the puzzle. Now, this is where you want to grab the URL at the top of the page, which is the long URL of the puzzle, and you want to send that to a URL shortener. I use tiny URL. You can use any URL shortener of your choice, um, and you can then create the final link for your puzzle.
So what I've done now is I've taken this to the test version of Sudoku Pad because as I said before, the full version hasn't gone live at time of recording. Um, and I will enter the solution and you'll see what happens when the correct solution is entered into the version with the solution saved. So now you can see it's come up with a message saying the congrats message with the, you solved the puzzle, the solution is correct. And now it knows that because the solution that has been entered by the solver completely matches the solution that the setter has listed as the complete correct solution for this puzzle. Not a different puzzle, not a, an, another Sudoku, not any Sudoku grid, this puzzle, it matches the solution that it was given so that you can be 100% sure that this is correct. Um, there are some other tricks you can do if you are um, working with um, grids that are not, um, that do not use standard um, rules. So for example, it is not easily possible to enter a zero into a Sudoku grid. So for example, if you were doing one of the Sudoku variants where you're using the digits zero to eight, you could go in, um, and this is why I had the JSON editor loaded, you could go into the JSON code and you could go into the solution and you could change all of the nines to zeros and then you the solution code in Sudoku pad would match whether you entered zeros or anything. And that would just mean going into all of these and changing these to zeros and then saving that solution. That is a more advanced technique, which I will not go into, but if you understand the JSON editor, you could do that. Um, and similarly, if you've got um, weird other constraints and anything, you can put those into the solution code. So you can go into your solution and these cells are literally, if you look at them, they are just red, 761895. They are just red um, left to right based on the size of your grid. So you can go into the solution. Um, so even if you were doing a, uh, if you had a created a 10 by 10 grid and you'd overridden all the solution checking and it was a different sort of puzzle and the solution was 33333444, you could put that in and that would actually work in the Sudoku pad app um, if you've gone in and entered that in the um, uh, and overridden that in the JSON editor but I'll let you figure people who are setting puzzles that complex can figure that one out for themselves what I wanted to show is how you could do it for just most of the puzzles that we set which are the normal Sudoku this will work with irregulars it'll work with any of the standard um, constraint tools Hopefully that is useful to people um, so that you can get these um, correct pop-up messages in the Sudoku Pad app um, and we will start seeing it, it, I feel it is much more rewarding for solvers if they know that the puzzle that they have done isn't just a correct Sudoku, it is the correct solution to the puzzle that the um, solver intended, particularly with the more complex rule sets. I've had um, a few people provide feedback to some of my early puzzles where it was like, oh, the app said it was correct, but when they've sent me Big Grid or they've spoken about it, they've actually gotten something wrong and they found that very frustrating, um, which is why when I um, found out that it it was possible to do solution checking in the grid. That was something I started doing. And most of the puzzles I send out on my channel do have correct solution codes into them if I can, because I, um, I just, it is something that I feel that solvers should have some confidence that they've got it right. Now, one thing I'm aware of is that Sven is planning at some point on making it that you can enter solutions directly into Sudoku Pad and saving them. I do not know the progress of that, and I do not know how it's all going to work. I believe it's going to be part of the cosmetic editor that he's working on for Sudoku Pad specifically, um, but I do not know when that's going to be released, how that's going to be released, or what it's going to look like. So... Um, until that is ready and there are announcements for it, um, the way that I have in or to enter all of these details is using the FPuzzles method I demonstrated. So rather than wait, I thought I would get that one out there so people could use it. So hopefully this will be useful to everyone. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was useful. And as always from Bremster, good luck with your solving.